We've talked about micro and macro. We've talked about positive and normative. We've talked about economic models and assumptions. So now we are going to look at our first economic model. And that is the production possibility <laughs> the production possibilities curve. Production possibilities curve or production possibilities frontier. Now, this model demonstrates two of the ten basic principles of economics in chapter one. One was that the people face trade-offs and they incur opportunity costs. As you uh, Recall, well, let's, let me actually write it down and I'll print it so you can halfway read it. Opportunity costs. Opportunity cost is the what you give up to get something. What did you give up to attend school this semester? You gave up something. Well, what did you give up? You gave up some money, okay, tuition, you gave up that. You gave up your time. And time is often the, the most expensive cost because you can't be two places at the same time, right? So whatever, well, whatever thing is, there's a lot of things you've given up. A lot of possibilities, I should say. The highest valued of those possibilities is your opportunity cost, okay? So let's say you gave up $5,000 to be here, and the time, during that time that you were in class and studying, you could have made, let's, let's say 10,000, just make the, the numbers easy. So what's your opportunity cost of attending college? Well, 5,000 in tuition and the 10,000 of foregone wages. $15,000 is your opportunity cost. Now the, uh, the 5000 in tuition is called an explicit cost. It's money you actually pay. You reach in your pocket and you pay it out. An implicit cost is something, uh, is the alternative use of your time. The, 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 it's what you could have done with that time. So if your highest valued use of that time is uh, you know, spending more time with your grandma, that's your opportunity cost. Okay, you spent you you the opportunity cost of being there is the you, you could have spent time with your grandma and and of course the five thousand dollars spent on tuition. So the best definition is simply it's what you give up, whatever you give up to get something else is your opportunity cost. Okay, the production possibilities curve uh, models that. So what it is is because resources are limited. There's a, there's a ceiling on how much an economy can produce in a given point in time. There is only so much you can do. So it's the maximum. So here it is. We've got assumptions. For, oh, we've got to take care of those assumptions before we look at it. The assumptions behind the, uh, the, the uh, production possibilities curve is that we have fixed amount of resources and technology. And that's another way of saying this is at a point in time. It is not over time. It's not like from the beginning of the year to the end of the year because we know resources and technology are not fixed over time. But at a point in time, it's fixed. So whatever resources, technology we got at that moment, that's, uh, that's what we're doing. And we're also assuming efficient use of these resources. And we simplify in a world with a zillion goods. Okay, we definitely do simplify here. We all will knock it down to just two goods. Okay, one on each axis. 
or uh, two types of goods to illustrate the trade-off between the two. Okay, so let's move that up a little bit. Okay, here it is. This here, we will say, is guns. We're going to use the classic example, guns. And butter. So, more precisely, guns, this would be military type goods. Okay, society can do that, or this would be consumer type goods. Okay, and we draw our curve in. If we produce, well, let's, let's say if we do nothing but guns, we produce that many. Okay, let's give that a number, let's say that's 10. If we do nothing but butter, let's say we, well, let's say, well, let's just say 10. Right there, that's how many we can do. So if we do nothing but butter, if all our resources are, are for butter, we can produce 10 of them. And we can produce any combination in between. Okay, so we draw the curve, looks something like that. Now the reason it's bowed out, that is to model the fact that not all resources are equally uh, suited for all types of production. Now, that's something uh, we'll talk about a little later. I'll give you an example that kind of knocks that in for you. Okay, so, well, before we go on here, pick a different color. That point right there, let's call that point A. That is inefficient because at point A, we're producing this many guns, excuse me, this many butter and this many guns. Well, that's less than we're capable of producing, right? So anything inside the curve is inefficient. Uh, we can produce, if, we, if we're producing this many guns, we're capable of producing that many butter. Or if we're producing this much butter, if we used our resources efficiently, we could produce that many guns. So anything inside uh, doesn't work. Now, a great example of being inside the curve is right now. Okay, it's right now. Uh, we have uh, pretty much shut down our economy because of this coronavirus. And, uh, whoops. And uh, it's not from any economic policy. It's not from uh, anything other than just we, we had to hold ourselves up and at home, and therefore we couldn't work. And because we weren't working, we didn't have any money. And because we didn't have any money, we couldn't buy stuff. And because we couldn't buy stuff, stuff wasn't being made. Of course, we weren't there to make it. Everything just froze. The economy just froze. So we went on the curve, anywhere on the curve is efficient, that's the maximum to inside the curve. Well, anything outside the curve, let's say right there, is unattainable, point B we'll call it. You can't be at point B. This is the maximum. This is the maximum you can produce. You can produce any combination. You can produce 10 guns and zero butter. You can produce 10 butter and zero guns, but you can't produce out here. You can't have 10 guns and 10 butter. Can't have both. Okay, so inside the curve is inefficient. On the curve is efficient. That's our maximum. Of course, the assumption is we are utilizing our resources efficiently. That's on the curve. Now, and then outside the curve 
is unattainable. Unattainable at least today. Okay, now out in the future, we will we can probably get to point B. That's called economic growth, and that's something else that it models. This curve models economic growth, economic growth over time. See, next year, next year we may that may be our production possibilities curve. And the year after that, maybe that's where it is. And then the year after that, ah. See, this thing shifts out over time as we get more technology, more human capital, more you know, knowledge and skills, uh, more resources can push that curve out over time. And that we call economic growth, which we will talk about in a later chapter in more detail. Okay. Now, let's plug in some numbers. Let's say we started right here doing all butter. Okay, we're doing all butter. And we're doing great. Man, we're 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 doing we our standard of living is just phenomenal. We're all working hard. We got all these consumer goods. But then the guys over on the other side of the hill are kind of uh jealous of all our stuff. They're jealous. They 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 are wanting our, our standard of living. Well, instead of working hard and making it themselves, they thought it'd be just easier to come take our stuff. So they're building up a big army over there. So we figure, you know what? We probably ought to defend ourselves here. So we, we probably ought to start making some guns, some military. Ah, not a bad idea. What will have to happen to butter production in order to make guns? You're going to have to give up some butter. You're going to have to transfer resources away from butter into guns. So let's say you decide to produce five guns. What is the opportunity cost of producing five guns? Well, remember, opportunity cost is what you give up to get something. What did you give up? Well, you went from 10 guns down to this many guns. So we haven't given that a number yet. Let's say that's seven. What is your opportunity cost of producing those five guns? Three butter. You went from 10 butter down to seven butter. It cost you three butters, three units of butter, to produce those five guns. Well, let's say you better, you figure, well, you know what? Those guys are pretty mean looking. Maybe we better produce a little more guns. Okay, so you increase gun output. Again, what must you do? You're going to have to channel resources away from butter into producing those guns. So let's say that's five. So what is your opportunity cost of going from five to seven? Now notice how I say this. What's the opportunity cost of increasing your gun production from five to seven? Well, you went from seven down to five butters. So going from five to seven guns cost you two butters. Your opportunity cost of going from five to seven guns is two butters. What's the total opportunity cost of those seven guns? Well, from 10 down to five. It costs you five butters to produce those seven buns, seven guns. Okay? So that's the idea. That's what the production possibilities curve does. It, it models scarcity. It models trade-offs. It models opportunity cost. It models the limits. And that's a very important concept, actually, limits. There is a limit. You know, sometimes we think the economy is so big. Oh, there's no limits. 
There's no trade-offs. Yes, there are. You're watching too many politicians. Politicians play this game, this economic game. Now, I granted some of them, uh, some of them are quite economic illiterate, but uh, most of them know exactly what they're saying. They know there are trade-offs, but you'll never hear that in election season. There is no such thing as a trade-off in election season. You can have it all. We can hit vote for your favorite candidate and you will have everything. There is no trade-offs. Okay, so politics doesn't do much for economic literacy, but uh, there are trade-offs. There are limits. There are costs and benefits, even in an economy as big as ours. So that, that's something, that's an important concept to get through uh, right now. Okay, well, I've got some more examples. Uh, we're going to play with this a little bit more, but I see this video is getting now 16 minutes long. I'm trying to keep these in a small, sizable, you know, bite-sized chunks. So um, we will end this one and come back and talk about economic growth and, and why the production possibilities curve is bowed out.